Good afternoon, everyone. I'm John Murillo, Chief Dealing Officer at B2 Broker. I've been in the financial markets for almost or more than 20 years, and I would like to thank each and one of you for joining me today. The topic of discussion will be the ABCs of international, I'm sorry, of institutional liquidity in the margin business. It's more of the insights on what we do. Uh, the following topic is something of great importance for those who are running financial businesses. Liquidity being the key of your success and your endeavors. So without further ado, let's begin with a fascinating subject. We have in this world of liquidity, what we know as prime brokers, and we will be discussing prime of primes. In a nutshell, I've summarized the concept of PB, FXPB, as follow. When you get access to liquidity, through a PB, you're getting access to tier one, two, three banks and non-bank liquidity participants. The PB, ten, there's a tendency, of course, based on balance sheet and other elements to create a credit line for trading purposes. When you have a PB, you have the collateral efficiency. What does that mean? Collateral efficiency means you don't need to have 10 relationships where you place collateral. You can consolidate that through your prime broker relationship. In essence, you can do all the settlement of your positions through one single entity. Bearing in mind that the prime broker world is sort of an exclusive elite in which not many institutionals get access to, Prime of Primes have come to the space to facilitate that gap and provide you with extraordinary liquidity conditions, which are just as competitive. The Prime of Prime is, in simplistic ways, it's a lower entry to market. It's a more flexible credit review due to the nature of their balance sheet that is being passed on to you as a financial institution. When we look at prime of primes, they're less capital intense versus a PB. Just to put it into perspective, in the retail margin business, a prime of prime will start you off at around 1% on a margin requirement basis on an FX pair. When you actually go directly to the PB, you're probably looking at 3% margin requirement. That's a very significant difference when you're carrying substantial positions in the market. Prime of primes have a tendency of being able to bespoke your liquidity provision, which means there are many techniques in which you can accommodate clients' needs. There's a great deal of flexibility versus a prime broker who is an entire different type of business where relationships must be carried on for years before you get some of that customization that is needed. When you have a PB, remember you have aggregated liquidity. So you have an order book in which you have multiple participants that gives you access to a great deal of depth, mostly for, I will touch base on this topic later on. And the prime of prime in a nutshell is just a lower margin level required. You are outsourcing legal and treasury services through that prime of prime relationship. That otherwise, if you had a PB, you will need to take care of. And that becomes capital intense in any operation. I think the diagram here, uh, in a simplistic way, I'll say this you can visualize the whole structure of this ecosystem. LPs, you get a credit line through your PB. Prime of Prime then aggregates that liquidity and distributes that to the end user. I must say that it's important to remember to get a prime broker relationship is probably one of the biggest challenges. It is capital intense. And even if you have the ability to post collateral, it doesn't mean that everyone qualifies. It is a pretty selective 
type of business that may have access to that PB. Most participants in this space have a tendency to reach to prime of primes to source their liquidity needs. On the next slide, we're gonna to touch base here on some of the most important benefits when you deal with an institutional prime of prime liquidity source. Naturally, you're aggregating LPs, which is essentially giving you the ability of obtaining and capturing that spread compression. You have an enhanced order book of depth of the market, which is extremely important when your business is growing because you're mitigating the market impact of large clips from your traders. So when an order goes to market on an aggregated basis, the order will split among multiple LPs. By having that institutional prime of prime, there's the mitigation, there's less market impact. In other words, the term of slippage, as some, some of you may know, will basically translate into liquidity consumption. This is under real market conditions. One of the key elements when you have an institutional prime of prime is the ability to decrease that counterparty risk. Prime of primes by nature, they are financial institutions with very healthy balance sheets, which gives you the ability to mitigate that credit risk aspect. Beta Broker, for example, our business, plays a role in this industry we have the ability to facilitate single margin accounts in which we act as a prime of prime liquidity source. As you can see from the diagram, it's a very simplistic way to look at how the aggregation, routing, et cetera, takes place. The different taker, sorry, the different makers in this space that we utilize to abstract some of that liquidity. I put together this particular table because I find extremely important to share some of our expertise over the years. When we look at an aggregation model in terms of liquidity, we always got to think about the benefits and disadvantages that brings different types of relationships. You can get access to a single LP, but there are some drawdowns in that instance. The field rates are not always optimum. You're going to have or likely more rejections than you wish. On the multiple type of liquidity, there, it comes a small disadvantage and the aggregated liquidity in one stream obviously doesn't exist. When we look at some other components of aggregated liquidity, you have probably the best and most competitive conditions. One of the key components that I consider always when doing business with anyone is counterparty risk. Back to this previous subject, the prime of prime model works very successful because you essentially get the best of both worlds. You don't have to have a PB to have a prime of prime relationship in place. I believe over the years we acquired a very good understanding in liquidity terms. We're probably the largest crypto CFD wholesale provider in this spectrum. And obviously we can cater to the FX, spot metal, commodities, et cetera, type of business. This is a very valuable piece of information that I think brings a great deal of advantages through time. And once you look into it, which I hope all of you can just come to our website and have a look at this information, it's a piece of work in terms of value. We are adding value by sharing our years of expertise. Another element that I consider is extremely important in the liquidity space, especially in the institutional world, we always look at elements on what we consider a multi-currency model versus a single currency denomination. We're talking about margin accounts here. As you can see, you can have a multi-currency approach whereby you may denominate your accounts in different types of currencies, whether it's fiat, dollars, euros, fiat, etc., or cryptocurrencies, that is something a lot of our customers have become accustomed to. They denominate an account on BTC, ETH, XRP, whatever crypto of their choice, 
and they see PL swap charges and commissions on that currency. It's a very popular approach out there today. Nevertheless, one must always remember when you have a base, um, a base currency aspect, remember if you have dollars as a deposit or euros and you have currencies denominated on those currencies, you have no market exposure. Now, if we look at the single currency approach where you just decide to denominate everything in dollars, but you get deposits on euros, yen, just on the currency, look, look at the fluctuations we've seen on currencies throughout this year, you are exposed to risk, to market risk on those currencies. Needless to say that crypto being such a volatile asset can bring a great deal of volatility as well as risk to your operation. So sophisticated businesses come to us with different needs and we try to cater to them, to their needs by providing some advice and insights on how to manage those currents, different types of currency operations. So this is a key component in when, when it comes down to liquidity because it can have an impact in your business over the long run. Our company over the years, we have built an architecture for aggregation and distribution, which is robust. We use the likes of 1.0, Prime Exam, Centroid, to distribute, sorry, to aggregate and distribute. We, we look at different core platforms, the likes of, you know, MT, uh, C, um, C Trader nowadays, our own proprietary software, B2 Trader, for spot trading purposes. And we utilize all this architecture so that clients can benefit from this, I call, years of experience. It is important when we look at distribution to utilize or partner with businesses that use the best of the best technology within the space. It is core to know that your partner is using the best hosting, the best distribution, the best aggregation models that exist within this space. Last but not least, as I mentioned before, our company prides itself. We've been dealing with crypto businesses for many years. We have created a very similar model to FXPB. We aggregate liquidity from different venues and we distribute that to our end users. We have at the moment on our liquidity pool on crypto CFD over 150 crypto pairs. We have selected them carefully based on certain criteria, primarily liquidity behind the scenes. So if you enter into a trade at any given moment, you don't find yourselves in, an, in a position where you cannot exit that trade. This is key to power different businesses out there, especially since we deal with institutional and corporate entities. Crypto CFD, I think, if I'm not mistaken, we probably have let's just say a large market share in the broker dealer community. We're being used by most brokers who offer cryptocurrencies today. So this is a product in which we have been evolving over the years. Crypto, despite that is a not so mature industry, shall we say, compared to FX, which is something I've been involved for several, several years. Um, it's, it's becoming a very interesting play because a lot of institutional players have joined. And now we see a more sophisticated liquidity source for any business and we can facilitate that. On a theoretical and so-called insights of liquidity, um, I pretty much wrap it up. Allow me the last few minutes we have remaining. Let me discuss our business model and who we are and how we can assist you with different opportunities. B2 Broker, since day one, we have become, or since inception, we became an agency model. An agency model means there's no conflict of interest between us and our partners. We run an STP business, which is essentially, we are dealing purely between business to business. We don't compete against your retail flow or retail clientele. 
by running an STP model, there's no counterparty risk. The risk is mitigated because the trade actually goes to market and gets executed accordingly. We have a liquidity team, liquidity management team behind, which can always assist you on any of your needs. Over the years, what we've tried to do is we've been focusing on building a reputable, sustainable, diversified operation. This is where we spend a great deal of our time, building a business that can be here for years ahead. At the same time, our liquidity gives you access to an institutional pricing. b 2 Broker essentially is a prime of prime relationship that can be established in no time. Through our vendors, through our aggregation, through our distribution, some of our commonly onboarded clients are prop desks, broker dealers, family houses, and hedge funds, small and large, which tells you the maturity of our operation. On this next slide, very briefly, these are some of our products. On the tech side, we have built CRM, or Trader's Room, as you may know it. We have a copy trading or investment platform, Marksman Hub, which is a liquidity hub for crypto spot exchanges primarily. We have, in addition to it, our B2 Trader solution, which is a crypto white label exchange. This is one of many of our products. The liquidity part of the business is a multi asset package, seven asset classes in one margin account. This is a unique proposition. Our team has already. 11 offices worldwide. We are over 330 employees to date. We are personally, I'm based in Dubai and our headquarters are here, but we have offices at some of the key points that are relevant to our industry. In addition to it, we are probably one of the largest white label provider, as many of you know us. And we have a new project coming up digital banking services, revolutionary and quite exciting times ahead. I think we will be in a privileged position to service many of your businesses. Our digital asset processing, B2B and Pay, one of the very well-known brands globally today, essentially is you have the ability to accept crypto payments and convert that into a fiat solution or just simply use our blockchain wallet services. We have our crypto digital asset exchange, which is known as B2BX, purely institutional. No retail clients get onboarded on that. So these are some of our products that have assisted hundreds of businesses throughout our history. We believe we have a very strong proposition in the business that we're in, and we are confident that we can service any of your needs. Most importantly, my team, myself, we're here to answer any questions you may have over the course of the remaining of the event. Once again, I would like to thank you for listening. I hope I can see you at our booth over the course of the next few hours or tomorrow. If anyone has any questions, please feel free we're more of an open book than anything else.